Welcome to Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Robel, and on today's tips and tricks, I'm going to start to take you through the very beginning processes of how to weld aluminum. For our first test piece that I'm going to be working with, we're going to work with some 3 16 6061T6 aluminum. It's the same thing I make my skid plates out of. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to work on chemically prepping this to make sure it's clean. So I have some denatured alcohol and a lint free cloth and basically I'm just going to wipe down the oil off of this. And we'll get a nice clean finish. And the next thing that you want to be concerned with is would be a mechanically clean. Now this piece of material is brand new straight from the mill so we just kind of really need to get the oily residue off but if I was really trying to obtain a very very good weld then I would take a stainless steel brush and this one's labeled uh, for just aluminum and you want to only use it on aluminum so you don't cross contaminate and you just want to make sure that where you're going to weld is is clean so we can do this and you can see we have some stuff starting to come off and you'll want to just get that so it's nice bright and shiny and once again the mechanical clean is something that you don't always have to do but if you have a project where you need everything to be very structurally sound then I chemically clean and I mechanically clean and then I weld this is the torch setup. You can see I got about 3 16 of the tungsten sticking out and I'm flowing right about seven and a half to eight liters a minute on the argon flow regulator. Now I'll take you through the machine settings on how I weld aluminum. I have the pulse turned to low. My pulse width is right about 55-60%. Pulse frequency is down at 0.2 and my pulse current is right about 150 amps. Now my AC frequency I have set to about 200 hertz. AC balance I'm about 45. Arc force does not come into play, that's for our stick welding. Start amps I'm about uh, at 10 amps. My end amps I'm about at 10. And my post flow I'm right at 3. I do have the machine set to AC and we are up in the TIG mode. And I am utilizing the foot pedal and I'll show you those settings. Remember when we plug in the foot pedal that the foot pedal now becomes our rheostat. And I have that set maybe what we want to call 5 eighths coming up on 3 quarters. I'm in position and I'll let it pulsate about 3 to 4 times until I see the material starting to turn glossy. As it turns glossy, I'll basically wait for the pulse to hit, I'll enter the rod, and then I will move. And I'm trying to work on being very consistent on my movements, maybe 3 16 of an inch, maybe a quarter inch, depending on how you want your ripple pattern to look. As I'm getting down here about midpoint, I'm starting to notice that I'm running hotter, or hotter than I'm normally running. So I'm backing off the foot pedal, that arc is... Uh, unestablished and then I have to come back and reestablish getting hot again come to find out I didn't have my water cooler on and my torch was running incredibly hot so little food for thought I thought I'd leave the mistake in for uh, training thank you for watching longevity's welding channel I'm Tim Roll and I'll catch you here next time